I am pleased to announce that today I will be finishing the build of my hexapod robot. Now this process has taken me longer than I thought it would. I will be going over all the improvements that I made since the prototype and all the problems that I faced along the way. Let's get started. So in the prototype, the feet were just placeholders that kept the servos off the ground. I have completely redesigned the feet to be both functional and to give the robot a bit of style. The feet are thick enough not to bend under its own weight and extend over 8 centimeters to give the robot plenty of height off the ground. I also shortened the legs by about 30% and thickened up the design a bit to reduce flexing. For added convenience, I added this handy wire clip. It snaps onto the center section of the leg and will hold your servo wires out of the way. So there's no need to buy zip ties or other wire management solutions to still have a very clean and professional looking robot. As for the shoulder joints, I've updated the servo horn groove. The shoulder joints can now accept any of these shaped servo horns. However, your legs still require these. So this means that you can use one of these for your shoulder joints and you will have some spares of these for your legs. Moving on to the chassis. Starting with the base plate, I've added a battery cover with a cantilever latch. This is so that I can open the chassis to replace the battery without the need of a screwdriver. While I was building the prototype, I noticed that the base plate and the electronics plate didn't mess very tightly. So I've adjusted the wall height of the base plate so it will reach all the way to the electronics plate and cover this gap. I found that was a good idea to mount the robot on a stand when developing the software for my Spot Micro so that it won't accidentally walk off the desk when you're not looking. I neglected to build one for the prototype, but I managed to build one for this version. It is a pretty simple stand with one exception. Notice these notches at the top of the mounting plate. I've added similar notches to the bottom of the base plate. You can place the whole robot on these notches to prevent it from sliding off the stand. To remove it, you just have to lift it directly upwards. For the electronics plate, I've added several new cutouts and details. First off, I've added small cutouts next to the shoulder servos that are designed to allow the servo wires to discreetly enter the chassis. Second, I added a cutout for the buck converter to access the battery compartment. That was something else that I neglected to add for the prototype. Without this cutout, I had to leave the battery outside the chassis and route the buck converter over the top. I had to iterate over the placement of this cutout a few times to get it right. There's not a lot of space in the battery compartment for the buck converter plug. I found the best placement to be in the corner. Finally, I added this ridge around the edge with these small cutouts on the ends that support the brand new cover. The cover is designed to hide the mess of wires and electronics. It uses a cantilever mechanism to hold onto the electronics plate. This is so that it can easily be removed by hand and it gives a nice clean look with no exposed screws. I also had to iterate over the design of the cover a few times. I originally designed it to just cover the electronics. However, the wires ended up taking more space than I thought they would. So I had to increase the height of the cover a few times until I could completely install the cover. The one element that I added to the electronics is the power switch. I can now turn off the robot completely without removing the battery. This feature was very helpful in my spot micro build. However, it still requires me to remove the cover. So I may look for a way to move the switch to the outside of the chassis. I haven't written a lot of software for it yet. Right now, if you turn it on, all the servos will power on and move to an idle position. For the next video, I want to work on developing the software, including wireless control. The Raspberry Pi Pico W supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I would like to get at least one of these set up to be used for wireless control. I'm thinking I will start with Wi-Fi because I've worked with Wi-Fi in the past, so it seems like an easier option for me. If you have any ideas of what I should do with this robot next, leave a comment down below. And be sure to give this video a like and subscribe for future project updates. Thanks for watching.